let's circle it back to Frank Reich real quick. I will tell you a genuine thing right here that has stuck out to me in his interviews, not only his original press conference statement, but his uh, what he did in his uh, press conference, I mean, his introductory press conference a couple of weeks ago, but what he did today, he continues to come back and say, this is about the players. This is about the players and it doesn't feel forced. He knows he's been a player in the NFL. He knows the players win the games. He knows that they're there to put them in the position to succeed. And what I love about this is it doesn't feel about Frank Reich. And what I've met when then I, when I met Trey, I didn't want this to be about me, this podcast. I want it to be about all of us. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, number one, I, I feel like I, I need to bring something up because I think it's going to be because you, you talked about that um, with uh, with Frank. By the way, Trey, welcome. Uh, we're happy to have you. But you talked about that. This is, the, if I'm being honest, Frank Reich's press conference should be making Greg jump up and down for joy because the thing that he said was that the winning games is 90% on the players and 10% on the coaches, right? And I think that that's such an honest answer that he is basically putting that, but it's also putting that responsibility on the players too. And I like that at the same time. Um, but at that I was just sitting there thinking about it that entire time today. I was like, oh man, that's going to get Greg jumping over the moon for this guy. It doesn't Cause there's just been this constant, is it coaching that they can't tackle the, or is it that they're just not good at the game? Like, so it was a, it's an interesting uh, thing to see that happen, but I like it. You know, when you look at uh, Nick Saban's success at the collegiate level, is so much that people have talked about, or at least I have a friend that's a big Alabama fan, and he always talks about a coach being a guy that is po positioning guys for success. You know, and it's not what they do necessarily that change. They're nourishing success in a way. You know, is that if you're a parent – and your kids, you know, I get so many compliments about how my kids are and things like this. And I always joke in so many ways that, like, I didn't do this. Uh, and you know what? To be honest, I didn't. It's not because of me. You know, not like, but what I'm saying is this is like you, you have to put your, your kids in a position to succeed in life. That means failing. That means you can't live your their lives for them. And it's not. And when you're a parent and you make it about yourself, that's problematic. And it feels like this guy says this. This is not about me. It's yes, I want to be very good at my job. I want to be successful at my job. But that means supporting these guys in a way that maximizes their success. And I felt like Matt Rule was me, me guy. What I can do, what I can do, what I can do. And Frank Reich. What he said is this. He said he tells his coaches they try to put numbers on this. Is it 10% or 20% that the coaches, you know, 80% players, 20% coaching? He said, I don't care really what number it is, whether it's 10 or 20. We have to get the 100% of our 10%. We have to get the 100% out of our 20%. So what he knows is that like, and he said that's the difference between a game or two or three throughout the season. Right. It feels exactly the opposite of Matt Rule, exactly the opposite of the concern. Frank Reich was a player in the NFL. He's no, he knows these guys know what it takes to win. They have been in rooms where guys are feeding them bullshit, you know. And he, it just feels safe, and it doesn't feel safe as in we punted. It feels safe, like I feel like. I'm an Italian kid. I'm a mama's boy. My mom, I can murder someone and my mom be like, he a good boy. But my <laughs> sister, my sister does one thing wrong and she's all over her ass. Right. But uh, my mom's house is a safe space for me. Like if anything went wrong, I could be 62 years old in my life in the dumpster and I just be like, mom, I'm gonna sleep on the couch and I just feel safe. Mm -hmm. I feel safe. with. <laughs> I feel safe with Frank Reich and Jim Caldwell. Bedtime parent vibe, pappy vibes. I like it, man. 
Dude, I, I like I said, I've never felt more comfortable with the set of coaches that I didn't really know anything about. Every time that I hear more and more about them and learn more and more about them, it's impossible to not like them. And knowing that we're building uh, an offensive-minded football team with a fast and aggressive 3-4 defense and the coach, the proper coaching personnel that knows how to implement all those different things together – yeah, Panther fans should be excited right now. The other great thing about this staff, particularly having Reich, Caldwell, Capers up there. You know, Capers comes joined at the hip to Ajiro Evero, and he mentioned that. He said he talked about how good of a working relationship they have. So uh, uh, Evero respects Capers. He's a mentor. Right? And what I love about this is that Frank Reich, Caldwell, and Capers – no, they've forgotten more about football than Matt Rule will ever know. They've forgotten more about football than I will ever in my life learn or watch. So what I feel like is this. They understand football to where the young cats who have the excitement, who have the innovation, that they know if they're selling them a fraudulent company or if they're selling them something real. What is the dropout movie where the lady creates the entire false medical company where they were doing the blood test? She just went to prison recently. They did a show on Hulu. It was the start, the health startup. You guys don't remember this lady? It's called Dropout. On It's a great show on Hulu, hold on, drop out. Let me go. Oh, I don't have Hulu, man. They uh, well, they, you they, mean they have heard this? They story. got too many commercials, man. Um, it's the story Can't of Elizabeth watch, Holmes. Uh, price pick, price picks. Um, is a good. I'm just <laughs> no, Elizabeth Holmes is the story, and the company was called Theranos. It's the unbelievable tale of ambition and fame gone terribly wrong. She did basically. She created a healthcare startup company yeah, that was like a tech that. company and yeah. she sold this fake yeah. technology and she just was a snake oil salesman in a sense yeah i feel like this is that well i don't feel like i know this is that if these young and up and coming brilliant offensive minds like uh the thomas kid or uh the ever like they can't get pa they can't be selling these guys false goods what I they would recognize if these guys were bullshit. They know so much about football. And so that gives me so much confidence in their ability to nourish those attributes, to truly mentor and pull the most out of the young, ambitious guy trying to make his career instead of someone trying to be out over their skis a guy that's like taking over a company prematurely and trying to convince everybody like he knows what he's doing. They know these guys are real, the real deal. And I think that's why their coordinators have had so much success throughout the league. So uh, again, a real comfort, I feel a real comfort. And I don't think that that necessarily, cause I saw G baby out there upset. I'm not saying that he's going to all of a sudden just take us to a Super Bowl. I just truly feel confident being a part of that crew as a fan. Let's go to the next call. Stop me if I played this one already, please. Hey, guys. Hey, Ralph. How? I wanted to ask you guys about, now that Frank Reich is here, does all the small market crap go out the window as far as all oh, players aren't going to want to come here because we're a small market and whatever do they put all that aside and say you know i want to go play for frank reich i want to go play for jim caldwell i want to go play for d staley i want to go play for ejiro evero all the guys that are on our coaching staff that are here that guys in the league would want to come and play for no matter where we are you know I, honestly if i think if we had this coach if they had this coaching staff i honestly think guys would go to freaking uh, uh fargo north dakota to play for them you know that's how 
highly, I think, of this coaching staff so far. And nothing against any Panthers fans that might be in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm sure there's some. It wouldn't surprise me. But they're probably not able to call from the on the podcast because they're probably busy shoveling snow out before they have to go to work. But <laughs> aside from that, I really like that we have such a great coaching staff. And what do you guys think about putting all of our players in a package that want to work on a 3-4 defense, whoever they might be, and uh, throwing in a few mid to late picks in the draft and giving it all to the Chicago Bears for Justin Fields. Let them keep their number one pick. Eh, I don't think if you give the Bears enough players and enough piecemeal and you let them keep their number one pick, I don't think they'll miss Justin Fields too much because they can get a quarterback and they're just as likely to start rebuilding because, let's face it, they need everything. And they're the Chicago Bears, but who knows what they're going to do. Anyway, guys, I want to know what you guys think of my call. Anyway. He's gotten so good at that bellow, man. He holds it and he (laughs) runs with it. Uh, Appreciate you, Joey. And yeah, you know, there's definitely Panther fans in North Dakota. There's probably Panther fans in every state of the union, don't you think? Dude, we meet some Panther fans online from just about everywhere. Right. So I, yeah, I, th- I think well, what he was saying right there, I don't think that the Reich tree and everybody's brought here necessarily brings a bunch of free uh, high target free agents that want to come here and play now. It may bring some guys here that want to come play for them, but you're not looking at guys like Aaron Donald and 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 you know uh, Von Miller type players top of their top of their you know uh, position in the league type players I don't think are going to want to come play for Frank Reich now if we start winning here and and like start to put something together that looks like it's going to be successful and something else be a part of that then yeah I think the small market fear starts to kind of go away a little bit but I don't think first year it's going to be as big like I said there'll be players I think want to come play with Frank Reich but I don't think there's like a top of the league guy that would come here just to play with Frank Reich right now, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. I completely agree. I do think there is one thing about that with to think about and consider is that it's not the top free agents always. It's guys that are not in their twilight of their career, but have the luxury to where they've made some money. You know, they're not um, if you if five hundred thousand dollars or one million is if the money alone, if you're like, oh, or you're going to pay me a little bit less, you don't want to. You would you want to? Oh, well, I guess here Jacksonville, they have to overpay their free agents, or at least people have said that because no one has confidence. I think that you wouldn't have to overpay guys to get them here. I mean, you're going to have to always pay them fair market. But it's like the only way they're going to go to this other crappy team is if they if the money makes them go. Because if you give me a legitimate deal, I feel comfortable enough in this location to 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 go there. Right. And I think Evero choosing Carolina over Minnesota. I don't think it was only the money and I don't think it's the roster. I think it is the opportunity. Could be. That's fun. All right, let's go on to more news and just finish these coaching hires out. Sean Jefferson, wide receivers coach. Yeah, uh, I love this. I love this. Father of fa- this is the father of Justin Jefferson. Oh wow. The, I thought the, that was Van Jefferson. No, you're right. I did say I said the wrong one. Van Jefferson for the from Rams. St. Louis from the Rams, yeah. Yeah, right. from, from the, but by the way, it's still a damn good receiver. Like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. got he got hurt this year and they were they were missing him. Um yeah, uh father of Van Jefferson, he is a very um uh people speak very highly of this man that he is uh one of the main reasons why pretty much every team he goes to 
they put up really good receiving numbers. Um, so really love the fact that he is now a part of the coaching staff. I want to say I've seen him on a hard knocks or, a or one of those NFL documentary shows before he seems to be a very personable type of dude. A lot of people are really happy to have him. Um, I'm excited, man, especially if we're able to get more development out of guys like Terrace Marshall Jr. and Shy Smith. And no, I have not given up on Shy Smith, damn it. I don't care what Tony's ass says. Still better than Demir Bird. Or than Demir Bird. I don't want to hear no it. Way. Shut up. And uh, Same you know. guy. They're the same guy. Look, is I've come, I, I think I know what I want to say about these guys is I'm rooting for their success. I believe there is a world that these guys can make plays in the NFL, but I'm not ready to bet on it. Just like I wasn't, I'm ready to bet on the Panthers winning back-to-back seasons under Frank Reich's tenure. I'm not ready to put my eggs in their basket. Not to say that I wouldn't be happy, like I don't think they can carry the basket. I just am not ready to bet on certain players with that much of certainty. So maybe Terrace Marshall Jr. turns out to be great. I'm not saying give up on him, but I'm not ready also to put my career on the line for Terrace Marshall Jr. I'm not, you know, is like is, and it almost has been foolish in our past when our coaches have believed that they, they have put their career on their lines for guys like Byron Bell. They have put their career on the line for guys like Matt Khalil. They have put their career on the line for a secondary with all rookies. And I feel like, yeah, it can win. Those guys can be good, but the odds are long. It's like the five pick or the four pick on prize picks when you can just do the two pick with the free Uh, square. I, I hear you, man. I, I just think that when you look at the talent that we have at the receiver position, there, you know, we should be believing in these guys long term. Terrence Marshall Jr., Shy Smith, these Why? guys have. Why a ton should of you be talent. believing them in long term? I think you should be hoping. Why should you in not? Them? Because no, 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 no. hoping in no, them, no, 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 no. hoping this in is, them. Yeah, of course you can hope, but we are also see the development that happened in a very short amount of time once Steve Wilkes became the head coach last season. Sometimes but how many players need, have we said this with? We said this with Tony Eason. To get the most out of them. How but much development does Chad Smith get? Or Terrence Marshall get? Jr., bro. These yeah. guys didn't even eclipse. You still owe me $5 go. for Terrence Marshall Jr. not Dude, getting over listen, 600 yards or whatever. What? They have to have the opportunity to do it. They have to see the Last field. 12 games. No, but did you, no, 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 no. Ifs, did you not remember ifs, the entire of a training where they wouldn't put Terrence Marshall Jr.? or Shai Smith, or mainly Terrace Marshall, they wouldn't give him any snaps early in the season. And then later on, we finally see them after they, you know, play him. What a concept. And didn't you see what this man is capable of? He was a second-round pick for a reason. He that's better why be it, capable that's of why that. It's in, okay, but that's why it's important that you hire guys like Sean Jefferson, that have a proven track record. Of not arguing against it, out of but I'm not ready to candidate. bet my roster I'm with Tony. on those guys. I hope that they show out. But you might as well. That's like a, that's like saying Cincinnati shouldn't have drafted Jamar Chase because they had wide receivers that they thought were like in the process of developing. So what, you really I'm saying this is that I'm not trying to cut way? them. I'm not trying to cut them, but I'm not, not sure – that my plan A is starting DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall Jr. What are you going to do? What's your plan B? What if A, one of those gets, any of them get hurt? DeAndre Hopkins. B, what if you know they're not good? B. No, there's a bunch of free agent receivers and every time. Okay. Them, you're not then you're not them. truly you know, betting on them. You're not, hoping on them. Saying. You're either going to have to go into the free agent market and pay semi-top dollar for a guy that's been around the NFL before or – you continue to bet on your young players on rookie contracts who have done nothing but continue to get better and you better as this? we have seen them. Dave That's Gettleman did saying. this. 
Dave Gettleman did this with Ben A. Ben Wickery. Oh, you guys all hate that motherfucker. No, but there's a difference in talent level between Ben A. Ben Wickery oh, and Terry Jr. Oh, no, 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 no. Ben, ben Wickery was never a good draft pick. He was, no one ever thought that he was highly talented. You're, you're talking about players that had two completely First different First of all, no one thought Shy careers. Smith was highly touted, homie. A. B, you're <laughs> conflating <laughs> multiple up. people into he one person. Listen to bowl. this, though. Go back. Look, at the end of the 2015 season, Go back and look at what the redrafts for the NFL are. They always do this at the end of the season. What if you redrafted the players after season one for the whole NFL and the Panthers had like five first, like people were thinking Funches was going to be good. Think about that. We said the same shit about Devin Funches. We said the same shit about Ben A. Ben Wickery. And I'm not saying that they're the same player, man. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just, I am not willing to bet my fortune on unproven potential. You're going to have no choice because it's either that or you're going to get someone like a DeAndre Hopkins or, uh, you know, I, I'm not looking at the free agent list right now, but also, do you really want... That would really be cheaper want, than you, going and getting Derek you Carr. Really, do you that would really be cheaper want, than getting Derek Carr. But do you really want to spend free agency dollars at the wide receiver position when, I mean, listen, we so have you want to walk into next season with the roster truly being DJ Moore, Terrace, uh, Terrace Marshall Jr. And Shai Smith with Chenault in a supplementary role that you're comfortable with that room. I'm comfortable with it, but I had DeAndre okay. Hopkins That's in a insane. heartbeat. No, and well, I, you didn't tell me. And you just told me you're fucking too. wanting to add something. I am not ready to say this. That's like going on a date with someone in two times and, and, and get married. It's an unproven receiving core. And that's the point that yes. you're making. Right. But <laughs> that's exactly but my fucking point. I'm also not <laughs> wrong for seeing a bunch of untapped potential that you're not seeing. That these guys, just because you haven't seen it yet, doesn't mean they don't have the potential to be really good long-term players for the Carolina Panthers. I thought the same thing. You remember, you know, I thought the same shit about Kevin White. Remember Kevin White, that wide receiver you know, that was going to be obscure names. That's dude. not that's obscure. Not, he was a top know, ten pick. Yeah, didn't he that deal was with injury histories like every year that yeah, he, he didn't. No, he never he even got to play. Virginia. He never. Yeah, he never even played. For the Bears? Like he, yeah, he like played one game or something. It was every, always every, hurt. Yeah, every it is that hurt. your your uh, Clemson guy is another guy. Uh, Sammy Watkins, the guy that was supposed to be the next Julio jo Look, oh, I've I seen so that. many players. Look, I'm not arguing that they don't have the physical capability. I'm not arguing that there is not a world where they will not be successful. I'm just saying this, is that it's a risky bet.